希腊是地处欧洲东南角巴尔干半岛南端的共和制国家，全国由半岛南部的波罗奔尼撒半岛和爱琴海中的三千余座岛屿共同构成。希腊的历史可一直上溯到古希腊文明，这里被视为西方文明的摇篮。希腊不仅风光明媚，更是连接欧亚非的战略要地。作为当世最灿烂悠久的文明之一。希腊与同样拥有古老文明的中国有怎样的文化交流？地处海上丝绸之路的重要中枢之地，希腊对于中国的一带一路倡议又有着怎样的看法呢？本期节目，我们将走进希腊，走进古老神奇的希腊文明，感受从爱琴海吹来的蔚蓝海风，同时。了解现阶段两国之间的文化贸易交流，以及希腊大使莱奥尼达斯·罗卡纳斯先生对“一带一路”战略的看法。希腊共和国位于欧洲巴尔干半岛最南端。国土面积十三万一千九百五十七平方公里，其中百分之十五为岛屿，三面环海。独特的地理环境让希腊拥有非常发达的航海业。希腊的航运传统历史悠久，是世界上最早进行造船和海上航行的国家之一。《荷马史诗》中记载的特洛伊战争，实际上是世界上最早、最负盛名的航海远征故事。这也表明，希腊人在很早以前，造船和航海技术就达到了相当高的水平。曾有希腊的航海家著书，非常详细地描写了现在被视为是西方世界和中东的港口与希腊航船的联系。书中记载到，航海业的发展促进了希腊与中国的交流，也促进了中国与西方国家的联系。而中国与希腊最早的接触，也是从海上贸易开始的。So basically,、um, during that time of the Greek history, let's say,、um, also、uh, we have contacts with your country.、Uh, the Byzantines sent envoys uh, to uh, the Chinese territories. They knew about China, and of course, what they were most interested about、uh, and is, is trade. As, as I told you before, trade is the, the driving force, and money, trade and money. Uh, is the driving force and commerce, which goes together with people-to-people -people contacts and culture and civilization. This is the driving force behind the unification of our globe, because the, the, our globe started as little cultures and little tribes existing in very, very thousands of separate places, and is being gradually united until we have the globalized world of today. Now,、um, in this. Process, which is a continuum,、uh, you have the Byzantines,、uh, which they、uh, developed relations of trade. Particularly, they were antagonistic with the with the Parthians and the Persians.、Um, you at this time you have the maritime road in the south, in which of course the 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 Indian subcontinent and in particular Ceylon played a very significant role in the contacts between. The Western tradesmen and the Eastern, and including the Chinese, and、uh, of course this the Silk Road、uh, through Central Asia, through the Central Asian territories. That is the the, the road to the north, which were also interested the Byzantines, and especially that interested interested them more because in the in the maritime road to the south, of course, you had. The the Persian influence and and um, uh, it was more dominated by 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 these、um, by these countries.、Um, so、um, at the time of the Byzantines until the 15th century, you have the development also of the Northern Road, which we now know as the Silk Road, and through that road that went of course through.、Um, Uh, territories that you know now, and some of them exist also in Xinjiang.、Uh, you can see in Xinjiang、uh, of China today, and also in in other places like、uh, I mean, I'd like also to mention Dunhuang, the Dunhuang caves and the Kizil caves. You can see places where it's evident 
um, uh, the, uh, it is absolutely evident that there was a contact, not just of tradesmen and of peoples, of, of, uh, of the people of commerce, of, um, of people who were interested about exchanging goods, but there was also a very significant cultural exchange and cultural influence. Um, where um, the two the, the civilizations of China, a very ancient civilization that dates back thousands of years, at least 5,000 years from now, and of course our civilization or uh, the Western civilization in general, um, which, which of course follows the trade routes in order to communicate with your civilization. And I mentioned those two places where you have evident um, uh, traces of these contacts. Yes. So this is uh, this is um, to continue my my uh, my elaboration. This is what I had to say. Um, uh, I mean, briefly about the the cultural exchanges. I think um, they were multifaceted also in the past. They did not include only economic, as I told you, or commercial or trade. They were multifaceted because um, they were also cultural, people to people civilizational in general and as I told you before this was made was made possible only when uh, technology the knowledge of uh, of um, let's say astronomy the instruments the methods of navigation and shipping permitted us also with Greek contribution I'm proud to say permitted us to actually open up a road both to the Chinese on the east side of the globe and to the Westerners on the, on the west side of the globe. I mentioned some names of Greeks that have contributed to um, navigation and to the development of all these instruments. 因为地理条件等原因,希腊的经济基础较薄弱,工业制造业较落后,但海运业发达。与旅游、侨汇并列为西外汇收入三大支柱 拥有世界级的航运枢纽是名副其实的世界第一航运大国，在全球航运业中占据着十分重要的地位。希腊作为航海业最为发达的国家之一，当前在海上也与中国有着大力合作。现在，希腊和中国在各个方面都有贸易往
very much looking forward to new um, uh, Chinese investments, uh, which will, of course, upgrade uh, the container port, which they will upgrade the cruise port so that they could accept cruise ships, huge, large huge cruise ships, the biggest probably around. So that would be greatly very beneficial. Also upgrade um, the, uh, the port that, that um, uh, the station, the car station, and uh, of course we want Chinese involvement in uh, the, the zone uh, of um, uh, repair zone which is very close to Piraeus and it's a, rep a shipping repair zone in particular. Uh, so uh, it's a multifaceted Chinese involvement which is in development, it's, it's still under you know, um, uh, evolution, it's still evolving. Uh, significant investments have already been announced, including uh, during the visit of uh, my Prime Minister Tsipras, heading uh, approximately 100 people delegation, including many ministers in China, very successful visit. So including that visit, uh, new investments were announced. So um, this is going very, very well, but of course it will be expanded uh, so as to include other investments in other parts of our economy. Of course, transports and energy are among the big, big sectors where we, uh, we have major companies involved. Um, I need not mention the fact that many Chinese companies already are involved or having, they have a presence in, in my country. Uh, when my Prime Minister was here, he had significant contacts with Huawei. He had significant contacts with Alibaba, he had significant contacts with ZTE, with Fosun. Uh, all of these companies are present or are exploring possibilities of cooperation in Greece, or are already having uh, significant um, uh, presence. Uh, of course, we're still, I would say, um, we're still having a lot of prospects for the future. Um, including uh, a lot of prospects in trade, because trade is still developing. Um, we have a lot of um, <clears throat> a, a way to go also in tourism. Tourism is a very special chapter, I would say, in our relations, because not only because it, it's, it's very special for bringing people together, but <clears throat> because um, tourism is, is a major source of income and a uh, major source of, of um, let's say, of, let's say, the evolving bilateral relationship in general that we have with China. And I think um, both Chinese, uh, I think, are fond of Greece and both Greeks are fond of China. So this is a very solid basis for developing. They, they both know about our own respective civilizations. They have a lot of respect for each other too. So I think this is a very good, um, a very good basis for developing relations. And tourism is developing very rapidly too. Um, it has, in the last four years, we have quadrupling, you know, 400% increase of the tourists in Greece, but still the number is very low in the sense that you have approximately 100,000. Probably if you put those Chinese that come from other directions, probably it could be a little bit more than 100,000. But what is this? Um, number, uh, let's say, compared to the huge number of, of Chinese tourists uh, to, uh, to abroad. So there is a great potential of developing relations. So you have, as I mentioned, you have the investment, the, the Dragon's Head, which is the investment of Costco, but you have developments already. Also, I should mention, um, for example, other companies like, like State Grid, for example, uh, which has been, you, you can read in, in the papers. Um, there is involvement of these companies also in my country. 希腊的美是让人心醉的。阳光下的爱琴海闪耀着蓝色和白色，蓝白相依，架起了这一片净土，构成了希腊的国旗与国魂。希腊的美也是沉静的。雅典的卫城、帕特农神庙、奥林匹亚宙斯神庙，这里几乎遍地都是著名的文化遗址。无不彰显着希腊悠久的历史文化底蕴。希腊的历史可以一直上溯到古希腊文明，被视为是西方文明的摇篮。同为拥有灿烂文明的古老国家，希腊和中国，一个是西方文明的源头，一个是东方文明的起源。
在新的时代背景下，两国合作多元发展，在“一带一路”倡议下，中西关系也将迈入新一步。这两种文明形态的碰撞将出现无数新的火花。Our strategic relationship becomes comprehensive, and of course,、um, contacts are increased and intensified ever since. So,、uh, your president,、uh, to come back to President Xi and his initiative, which is of course a very significant initiative on a global level, which is the OBOR or the One Belt One Road, he launches this big, big project in 2013. But、uh, as you see, we have already started our relationship with Greek-Chinese、uh, relationship already from the beginning of the of the years 2000, which is intensified. And after, of course, the inauguration of this new initiative, it it、uh, acquires a new dynamic, because a, a, an especially new dynamic, which gives it also a much more. Um, I would say、um, a much more significant perspective、uh, and a much more significant future. If you if you consider、um, the different parts of history, this last part, which starts basically in the years 2000, but it focuses on the OBOR、uh, launched by Xi Jinping in 2013,、uh, it becomes a very dynamic phase. And probably this is the most important characteristic that,、uh, in just a few years and in very quick, with very quick velocities and speeds, our relationship develops. As you as you know,、uh, after the launching, of course, we are not the only ones involved in Obor. There, there are more than 60 countries. Probably 70 countries are involved,、um, or, and of course, it's an open-ended initiative. And that's one of the big as of the big、um, let's say advantages of it.、Uh, the、uh, this relationship develops much faster, much faster, and、um, uh, Piraeus and the maritime road becomes much more relevant, and it becomes the epicenter and the focus of our relationship. And of course,、uh, Piraeus、uh, was, according to archaeological. Also, a research which which is recent was a huge maritime center. Also in ancient Athens, you should know, was the basis of the Athenian fleet,、um, and they have a very sophisticated way in keeping the ships and you know and and maintaining them and using them for their for their、um, uh, for also for power、uh, relations and power politics, but also for trade. So Piraeus becomes again. With、uh, this relationship and within the old border, because of the one belt one road initiative becomes also a very significant point on the maritime one belt one road. And of course, last but not least, but this is very very important to mention,、uh, culture,、uh, but not just culture, but political relations. Political relations have also showing the way. They have been opening the way, and they have been showing the way for the future,、uh, not just. I mentioned the visit of、uh, Prime Minister Tsipras. Before we had visits by Li Keqiang in Greece, by、um, Prime Minister Samaras also of Greece here, etc., etc. There's a long,、uh, there's there's、uh, there's a series of、uh, visits, important visits. Last but not least, we had the important visit of Liu Yunshan in in my country, which is recent, quite recent. This is the number. He's a member of, of course, the Standing Committee of.、Uh, Of the uh, uh, political bureau of the Communist Party of China, he went uh, to Greece uh, right after the visit of、uh, Tsipras in very recently, just a few weeks ago or months ago,、uh, with a big delegation. And the focus of that time was was culture,、uh, and of course not just Greece, China, but but China and Europe in general. So this is this is、uh, very auspicious.、Um, I think there are. A lot more things that we are exploring now, so that we cannot exhaust this relationship. It's a very multifaceted, very complicated, very complex relationship which is evolving still, 
And I think we haven't seen the best of it yet. And I think it's going to happen and it's happening rapidly. Um, uh, it's already, though, very, very satisfactorily developing. Uh, and I think to a great extent, this is also due uh, as a starting where I, uh, where I started to, to, to talk. It, it's also due and it's to a great extent due to Obor to the opening up of this initiative of your president, which of course include not just my country, but uh, a big, big number of other countries, including European countries. So um, in this respect, Piraeus is the shortest, you know, is the port with the shortest distance, uh, maritime distance from China, which means a lot of efficiency uh, and a lot of gains for your ships and companies and for China in general. 尽管过去经历过一段艰难的时光，但现在希腊的经济正在逐渐恢复。在“一带一路”倡议下，希腊和中国有了越来越多的合作。近年来，欧中关系的发展推动了希腊与中国的合作，这种合作进而强化了欧中关系。希腊地处重要位置，在“一带一路”建设中将扮演着重要角色。二零一六年，备受全世界瞩目的中国中远集团在希腊比雷埃夫斯港的投资，正是中西两国密切合作的一个缩影。同时，“一带一路”倡议也是多维度、全面的合作。正如罗卡纳斯大使所说，“一带一路”倡议不仅包含经济、贸易、投资，更包括文化碰撞，是人与人之间思想与心灵的交流。这对希腊来说非常重要。Uh, the two points that I would like to make. The first thing is about OBOR in general. That is, OBOR in general, um, as an initiative, is a, a very significant initiative. It's a very significant initiative because it brings up, and this speaks also for our specific relations between Greece and China. It's a significant initiative, first of all, because it's holistic. Uh, it comprises not just economics, um, not just trade, not just investment. It's not just about money, but it's also about other things, including people-to-people -people contacts, including culture. And uh, this, uh, let's say, multi-dimensional and holistic aspect of OBOR is very, very significant for us. The second very significant characteristic for us, uh, which also augurs well for the future, is the, the fact that, as your president also says, um, it's a win-win thing, it's a win-win cooperation. That is, it is not based on, let's say, a power, and it's not based on one-sided, let's say, unilateral um, exploitation. It's based on synergies, it's based on cooperation, it's a synergistic plan that uh, is aims at more or less equals a cooperation of equals which cooperation is mutually beneficial this is the magical word mutually beneficial or otherwise win-win so um, this synergistic uh, character of this initiative um, this uh, let's say collaborative character of this initiative and especially this win-win character of this initiative makes it very very attractive uh, to us to you of course because it's a it's a common plan in which we are connected and to many other countries as it, it seems that are very heavily involved now the third one um, aspect which is important of course is the, of course, one of these aspects, multifaceted aspects, is the maritime, which specifically interests my country as a maritime nation. Um, another thing is the fact that it is inclusive and it's open-ended, uh, which means um, inclusive means that there is no um, exclusion of anybody that wants to become part on the terms that I just explained. Uh, it, it does not keep them or those interested outside, let's say, a specific club, but makes them part of this cooperative, cooperative scheme. So this is the inclusiveness and the open-ended uh, open character also is very, very auspicious for us and very attractive because it means that this is not going, this is not a, a exhaustive, it does not exhaust itself in what we already have now, but it's 
it has, let's say, the potentiality to evolve into new things and to include new things and new chapters and new, let's say, fields of cooperation in the future. Now, this is why, trying to, coming from the general idea about OBOR, this becomes very attractive to us. Because, as I tried to explain, it has, uh, let's say, this aspect, perspective, dynamic aspect for the future, which means that it's not just about what we have found and in which the fields that we are already cooperating on, but it's also the fields that we will fi find and establish together in the future. So um, today it's already satisfying, as I told you, because of the things that are already functioning in my country. We already see results. So uh, there's no need to explain why we find it attractive. But because of the reasons that I tried to explain to you, which are not theoretical but very practical, we find it that it's something worth striving for and worth promoting in the future. Uh, both by China and for Greece in a collaborative and synergistic manner. So, um, to answer your specific questions about Greece and about what can we do uh, in the future, I think probably one of the most fecund, one of the most perhaps um, human, uh, let's say, aspects are, are, is this, the cultural aspect in particular, this is the most important aspect, in the sense that the communication that it creates the, between the two peoples. You see, we have this, let's say, particularity that we are in, on different ends of the globe. We have always been separated by these great distances. But now, somehow, uh, we are brought together. And this bringing together, as I told you, this was the secret of the Silk Road before. It created unity, created a united globe, or it, it, it actually promoted the uniting of our globe into one place. And this is probably still it's one of the biggest and most attractive characteristics that it brings our peoples together. It brings our strengths together. So this is a very concrete example of what has happened between our two nations, and this is people-to-people -people contacts. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank all these people that work for the intellect and our culture and our civilizations to promote, because as, as your president said, um, civilizations cannot be merged. Civilizations are always different, uh, will always be different. They will have their own character, and our identity lies in our civilization, uh, and uh, this difference of civilization and the communication between civilizations is what creates crea creates the future. 自一九七二年建交以来，中西两国友好合作关系稳步发展，中国与希腊之间友好互信关系日益增强，在联合国及其他国际组织的合作密切。虽然希腊和中国分处地球的两端，之间存在着遥远的距离，但是现在两国相聚在一起，这就是丝绸之路的秘密。一带一路倡议创造了联合，将世界连接在一起，也将各国的优势结合起来。一带一路是促进沿线各国合作的伟大构想，也是促进世界发展的中国方案。进展中的中远比港项目，很好地体现了“一带一路”倡议的五个核心内容，即政策沟通、设施联通、贸易畅通、资金融通、民心相通，以及共商、共建、共享原则。未来，中西两国将深化合作，共同发展，在各个方面更加向前迈进。希腊将成为“一带一路”上镶嵌在爱琴海中的一颗璀璨明珠，熠熠生辉。